Good morning. Uh, welcome to Talk to the Artist, WRWO.org. Today we're talking to uh, Mr. Tom Edwards from Seneca, Illinois. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing good. Yeah, good. yeah. You know, good to see you. Uh, tell me a little bit about where you're from, Tom. I'm originally from Campus, Illinois. Um, it's over by Dwight and Livingston County. Uh, population of 200. I was the only yes. an only child, and my uh, school was right across the street. Yeah. So I was able to just walk across the street there. We had uh, first, second, and third grade in one room, and fourth, fifth, and sixth in the other. Yes. So. Where did you go to high school at? I went to Reddick High School. Oh, Reddick. And uh, I was the class of 86, and I'm showing my age. <laughs> uh, uh, another year went by, and then they closed it. Yes. So they, they, uh, where did, where did they go after they closed? We went to Dwight? Uh, uh, Hersher, actually. Uh, Hersher. Hersher. And then uh, um, some of the students went to uh, Reed Custer up there, like yeah. from Essex. Yes. So we were R-U-C-E, uh, Reddick, Union Hill, Campus, and Essex. It was yeah. all consolidation. Yeah. Yeah, it was sad to see that go. Yeah. Uh, the old gym's still there. It's one of the, it's the last one, but it's like a rounded, rounded type right. gym. Yes. They kind of call it the barn. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, I played the stage quite a bit there. Yes, and uh, yes, my my father was actually a principal at Marseilles High School from 1952 to 1967. Wow! And then he was uh, assistant superintendent of schools at from 1967 to 1982. He was assistant superintendent of schools in LaSalle County. Wow! And uh, um, tell me a little bit uh, what your profession is at the time. I started um, special education, uh, I kind of got late into it. I was an aide uh, for a circuit breaker school. Uh, it used to be in Seneca, which I'm living in Seneca now. I did that for 15 years and I decided, well, I'm gonna go back to school. And I've been at Streeter High School. We started a program there, um, the FUSE program. So uh, it's going really well. How many years have you been there? Uh, I'm coming up on, it's going to be my ninth year. Ninth year then. Yeah. Yes. And uh, you really like the special education. Teacher. I do. I do. I work with kids that oh, sometimes have behaviors and, you know, they're like like anybody, they just have trouble controlling it, you know, when yeah. they get angry. And, yes. And I can kind of relate to that. That's kind yeah. of how, how I... How yeah, I, I kind of, I, I know a little, <laughs> I, I have a, I have a 50, 50 year old son myself. He's 50 years old and he's, in, he's autistic. Mm -hmm. Right now, he lives in Belleville, Illinois. It's close to where my daughter lives. Oh, okay. And uh, uh, I go down there and everything. Matter of fact, a matter of fact, you, he was in a place called Brother James Court in Springfield. It was part of the Hales Franciscan uh, Catholic community. Mm -hmm. Well, they closed it. Well, they're still open, but they're closing it August 31st. Oh, you know, I hate that. Because of staffing. <laughs> you know, yeah. We know yeah. what all that yeah. is. It's, oh, it's yeah. a big problem is the yeah. staffing, you know. Yeah. But it's a shame, though. It's it's a shame because, you know, to me, it's, it's the handicapped kids, you know, uh, you know, they're kind of low on the, you know, when they get to the adult. They're, 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 they're the kind ones of, that need it the most. And they're, they're, they're the ones that cut them out. Yes, you know. So, uh, I see. yeah, and uh, uh, tell me a little bit um what you did, you've done anything else besides that? Uh, I worked at Cattle Keller for, for close to five years. I worked in Joliet. Uh, I was an apprentice. And uh, it was, it was I, I, I enjoyed it, but they kept putting me on uh, second shift, which I did not like. I had a, I had a, a daughter come in, on, in the world and I went on family leave and I found this job at, at uh, Circuit Breaker School. Just kind of on the side, and then they offered me a full-time job, so I went, I went with it. It's funny how things just kind of happen. That's like kind of ironic, Tom, because I spent 36 years there. In my, oh, you know, okay. You know, I worked in the old C bill. Well, I worked in F building, and I worked in C building. I worked in F almost every building there. To tell you the truth, yeah. I was an NC operator. I became a kind of a tooling man. You know, I was a tooling. Mm -hmm. You know, I worked in the shop all the time, and I spent 25 years straight on third shift. Yeah. You know, it's, a, it's like a different. Work? I worked in a, in a lot of them. Uh, 
the B primarily. Um, but it, it, I just remember that the first time I went there, and there's guys riding bicycles, you know, <laughs> and, you know, because it's such a big, you know, yeah. such a big place, and the and the floors were, it was the wood blocks. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, the railroad, I, the railroad ties turned sideways. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I did repair. I did a lot of repairs as an apprentice. They just kind of rotated me. That was my third shift on an assignment. So we were repairing, and I was emptying. Uh, uh, the, the fluids, you know, where they clean, run through the machines, take that to the filter station and then you know, pump trucks and that. And, yeah, I learned quite a bit. What department there. were you at? I, I did, I was kind of everywhere. I did the inertia welder where it was, a, it was, this machine would spin and spin and would slam in and it would. Oh, you just, worked in the cylinders. I, I did work in the cylinders. I worked with cabs. I was everywhere since I was. Yeah, you know, yeah. I was the assembly. Assembly. I was the NC operator, and they moved me everywhere. Uh, F building went before it closed, and they, you know, the F building closed, I think, in 1986. Mm -hmm. And I was there, I was, I, I was, I started in 1966 in D building. Oh, wow. And that was, and then I got moved to F building, worked in there, I worked in the, uh, I worked in the um, control valves area mm -hmm. in the high strategic transmission area. And everything too, you know, and then NC machines and everything. And then I got moved to C building, I then moved to D building. And then I became on third shift, kind of the tooling man for all the, right. you know, because I knew all the, I had all the experience and everything, you know, right. and I knew the hydraulic stuff and everything, you know, because we we were nothing but a hydraulic plant, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the only thing we made was a hydraulic. Right. Of course, F, but B building, you know, they made a lot of welding and everything over there right. at the time. Right. You know, all that actually, it actually got moved to be building before it closed. Yeah. And what year did you leave? Ah, uh, about 95. 95, that was yeah. back, 95, that was B building, that's when they were building the big off-road stuff, you know. Yeah, 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 the, the, yeah I, I, and I was, I was dreading it when when they did, were doing welding assignments because, you know, a lot of guys liked it, but, you know, these big welders and they're going along and, and if you mess up the weld, you know, they got to grind it out. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. So they had that, that, that was My eyesight isn't so good. That was so a weld they, slag where they sent them there with a jitterbug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. and uh, tell me, uh, if you had any other experiences, you know, I, I heard you kind of were in radio for a little bit too. We did a little bit of radio. Um, uh, when I was, I, I went to Illinois State University and I kind of did some radio on the side and then uh, also did some student radio at uh, WZND, which was the student radio station. I did that for a summer. Um, and that was, that was kind of fun. I, I did the, I did nights. Um, I also worked at Custom Farm Seed out of Dwight, but that was before I went to, to Caterpillar. So. Yeah. I got to do a lot of all the different cool jobs yes. and stuff through my life. So. Yeah. But you know now, I know this now, Tom, you're just, myself also, we just can't get enough music, you know what I mean? Music all okay, the time. Okay, you know, all the time. Who were some of your influences? You know, I mean, everybody had a mentor, you know. Right. Um, well, kind of weird to say, but I'm going to say my biggest influence are probably the one that kind of pushed me was my parents. Oh yeah, yeah. They're so supportive. Uh, but as far as artists go, uh, I'm a I'm a big Beach Boy fan. Uh, just the harmonies really kicked in. I remember I was at my grandma's and it was they had a, a record and it was the Beatles and I played that and I I played She Loved You like a million times over. And over oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just thought it was so cool and I want to hold your hand, you know. Yeah. Just that beat and the and the harmonies and just the little the little British you know, that sense. Yeah. Uh, you know, Johnny Cash is another influence, yeah. of course, Elvis. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the older older groups like like the monkeys. I just uh, I got to see uh, Mickey Dolan's which was really cool yeah. when he was in Joliet. You know, it still has a you know good voice for yeah. you know like you know like about seventy six. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, influences go on and on. Uh, I remember I did a show uh, at ISU in the student center, and somebody came up and they said, "You sound like you kind of sound like Roy Orbison." I'm like, "Who?" 
and I looked in and old Roy Orbit said, oh, he's a guy sing for you. Like, okay, that's, that's all right. So, uh, so he, he, he was kind of unique in that he used like an orchestra behind him. And, mm -hmm. um, and I, I always worry, you know, when I get these you know, influences. And there, there's so many, I had so many influences and I just go listen to music constantly. Were you in like a band in high school or anything too? Yeah, we uh, we had I had we had some groups that we did, and we actually did probably my senior year we did a wedding reception. Uh, a girl was getting married right out of high school, and I'm sure I, I would love to hear the recordings because <laughs> it was just kind of thrown together. And we had a saxophone player and uh, you know, drums and guitar, yeah. and, uh, singer. And, yeah, but we got to play with a lot of different different yeah. people. You know, have you seen things. any? You know, have you seen actually the Beach Boys live? I have, I have, and it, it's funny. I what, I met my wife years later, and I had a, a Beach Boy hat. I think it was like 1983, and she was she had been at that same show. Yeah, I was at Maryville, Indiana, and uh, so yeah, I saw them. I saw them at the State Fair. And another influence too, they, they opened for the Beach Boys, uh, the Everly Brothers. Yeah. And obviously the Beatles took a lot from the Everly Brothers yeah. with their harmonies and stuff. Yeah. Uh, that was that was so cool just to see them perform. Yeah. You know, I heard this story too. I, I, you know, you ever heard of uh, the Fest for Beatle fans? They're, they're having it next month at the Hyatt Regency in O'Hara. Uh, the 12th through the 14th. This makes it to the old Beetle, the uh, Beetle Fest. You know, okay. had it for years. You know, they haven't had it for the last two or three years because of COVID. Right. And so they're, you know, I, I, I might go up the 13th because I went like, I, last time I was there, I think I was in 2012. Okay. But I went for years before that, you know. And I'm, one, I'm kind of the, uh, Closed closet musician, you know. I mean, you know. Oh, well, hey, you know, I have a guitar. Oh, yeah, yeah, you I got play guitar. No, no, no. Don't give me the play. No, yep, yep. I'm not that good. Yep, you know, I'm yep. not that good. You know. We have a new artist today. No, I, have you know, I, I, I had, I, I can't hold a guitar pick no more. I had cancer and I went to chemo and I got two fingers. Can you, can you do the, the finger thing? I'll play. The, I'll pick for you. Oh God! No, oh, no, no, no! <laughs> there's, there's always a way to it. Actually, tell you the truth, I've never performed live. Oh, I, my, you have to. Oh no! Wait, to, oh, wait a minute! No, no! Hey, wait yeah. a minute, Tom. Hey, we, we could, could do probably rig something up. Let's right? see. I have, a, I have a pick. I got this little clampy thing. Put that on your finger, and then yeah, no excuse. Oh no! 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 Because <laughs> my wife, my wife passed away last year. And she always told me, she says, Pete, you're not good enough to play live. You know, oh, yeah. you know sometimes wives are pretty big critics. You know? Oh, yeah, well, they, that's they might what, not, you know, that's you know, what, because yeah. I, because tell you what happened to me. I says, I, I just got, I, you played in fun days in Marseilles. Mm -hmm. And I was in the parade that Sunday after it went. And the, the, two days before that, I got a dobro. Oh, Brand nice. new Dubro. Nice. And you know, I'm I'm kind of the my, my playing is the uh, um, improv because I don't know. You know, I I know Tom. I know for you to get that skill, it took a lot of years of practice, didn't it? It did, and uh, I still kind of still kind of I do a lot of improv because I'm not very uh, as far as reading the notes. Uh, I took I took band like from fourth grade on. Yeah, I, uh, I played drums. That was that was a. Whoop.